Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Moss. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use the Chrome DevTools recorder with Splunk Synthetic Monitoring. If you're unfamiliar with Synthetic Monitoring, I would encourage you to take a look at the last video that we did, which is a thorough introduction to Splunk's Synthetic Monitoring feature. Synthetic Monitoring is a way for you to simulate user behavior on your application. And by doing so, you can proactively identify issues, hopefully before your users encounter them. Splunk Observability Cloud provides a platform through which you can define and execute synthetic monitoring tests. You can define the steps of a test manually through the Splunk Observability Cloud interface, which is what we showed in the previous video on Splunk Synthetic Monitoring. But another way that you can define the tests is using Chrome's DevTools Recorder. And the recorder is a feature that tracks interactions that you take with the application. And then after you're done recording, uh, you can export the steps that you took uh, while recording on that application. And uh, it would be exported into like a JSON formatted file. And then you can take that file and upload it to Splunk's uh, synthetic monitoring feature. And it will automatically generate a browser test based off of that recording. So to show an example, let's navigate to this custom e-commerce application that I have. So one of the core user workflows that I might want to track through a synthetic monitoring would be placing an order uh, for an item on my website. So I'll navigate down here to this uh, vintage camera lens and I'll select it. I'll add the camera to my cart and then I'm gonna place the order. and I'll navigate back to the home page. I could define those steps individually in Splunk's synthetic monitoring feature, but it would be tedious compared to simply using the recorder. Let's perform those same steps that I just took, but we'll record using the Chrome DevTools recorder while we're doing it. I'm gonna hit F12 to open up the DevTools window. And then to start a new recording, I could navigate up here to this menu and then under more tools, you should be able to see the recorder listed here. Now, once I've opened the recorder, I can select create a new recording. I'm gonna call this recording place an order. And then if your application uses any custom attributes uh, and you'd like the recorder to prioritize using those attributes when generating selectors, you can enter the attribute in this field. I'm going to leave that field blank since I don't have any. And then you can also specify selector types to record. Uh, so CSS classes, for instance, or if there's specific text uh, that's on a page, like after uh, you place an order, there's order confirmation text uh, that you'd like to use as a selector, uh, then you can uh, specify those selector types here. I'm gonna go ahead and start the recording. And then I'll navigate back to the home page of my e-commerce website, and I'm going to select the vintage camera lens. From here, I'll scroll down to uh, add to cart. And then finally, I'll place the order. And now that I've placed the order, I'll go ahead and end the recording. Now that the recording is complete, we could do a couple of things. Uh, for instance, we can replay the recording. And you can see in this particular replay of the recording, uh, the timeout limit was hit for 5,000 milliseconds. And speaking of timeouts, you'll notice here under replay settings, it says no throttling. And this is referring to network throttling that you can simulate. So if you wanna simulate a poor network connection uh, and uh, verify the performance of your website under a poor network connection, you can select various networks like 3G or slow 4G uh, and then simulate that connection and the performance of your website using uh, the throttling feature. Additionally, if you'd like more detailed metrics around the performance of this particular transaction, you can select the performance panel, which will uh, execute a replay, and then you can see a breakdown of the performance of the transaction. Now, 
Now, I know this chart is dense and I'm not going to go into the details, but uh, it is worth noting that you get uh, the timing of the core web vital metrics uh, included on this chart, like largest contentful paint. But this performance panel gives you a really detailed uh, view of the performance of each of the steps in this uh, transaction. Now I'm going to navigate back to the recording. And what I'm going to do is download this recording as a JSON formatted file. To do that, I'll navigate up here and select this button. And when I do that, you can see that uh, there's multiple formats that I can export in. Uh, in my case, I just want to export it as a JSON file. I'm going to edit the name a little bit. I'll place it in my downloads directory and I'll select save. Okay, great. So I've got my recording downloaded to my machine. Now what do I do with it? Well, let's quickly open it up and see what it looks like. Now in this file, you can see that for each step, a set of selectors are automatically generated by the recorder. Uh, for each type of selector that we uh, selected uh, at the beginning of the recording. So if I scroll down under the step section, you can see here under this interaction of type click, um, the different selectors that are available uh, for that click. And if I keep scrolling, I think there's actually an instance where it uh, also uses text as a selector as well. If you try manually generating selectors and defining like absolute X paths, um, that can be a really fragile method and it's also pretty tedious. So it's nice to have the recorder. The recorder is pretty good at um, defining more robust paths that are less likely to break as changes are made to the application. So using the recorder can be a more robust solution unless you have very specific or more complex user workflows that include uh, setting up state of the application, and it requires you to programmatically define that user workflow. Okay, so now that we've seen the exported file, let's navigate to Splunk Observability Cloud. And from here, I'm gonna navigate to Synthetics. From the Synthetics homepage, I'm going to select Add New Test, and then we're gonna create a new browser test. For the test name, I'm going to call it Online Boutique Place and Order. And then if I navigate down to the step section, I'll select import, and then I'll open up my downloads folder. And I'm going to drag that JSON file into this upload uh, field here. I'll select continue. And as you can see, it automatically imported the interactions that were defined in that JSON file uh, that was exported from the recorder. Let's give the steps of this transaction more meaningful names. So under the first step here, where we navigate to the homepage of the e-commerce site, I'm going to uh, put in online boutique homepage. And then I'll expand step two, and we're going to call this step uh, select vintage camera lens. And for the third step, we'll call it uh, add to cart. And for the final step, we'll call it place order. And then I'm going to navigate back to the test configuration page. As you can see, we've got four steps defined. We're also going to be running this test from multiple AWS regions. And it's currently configured to run on the default desktop size. And it will run every five minutes. I'm going to temporarily update this to every one minute. I'm gonna leave round robin on and I'm gonna make this test active. I'm not gonna create a detector for this test, but it is something that you should consider creating for your uh, synthetic tests. And although there are some advanced settings that I can select, such as adding custom headers and cookies, I'm gonna leave those settings as default. And then I'll select submit. After one or two minutes, once the test complete, we should be able to see test results on this page.
and it looks like the first set of runs for this test have completed. If I scroll down here to the availability section, uh, you can see individual runs from uh, the locations that we selected uh, when configuring the test. If I select the performance KPIs section, uh, then we can see specific uh, performance metrics broken down by location, or we can do it by page or synthetic transaction. And then based on that grouping, we can then measure uh, various performance metrics like uh, the uh, core web vitals, for instance. And then if I want to take a look at a specific recording, I can select a recording. And we'll be able to view specific screenshots of the transaction as well as uh, a replay of the full transaction on the right hand side here. On this page, we also get uh, the core web vitals metrics and uh, a number of other metrics as well. And over here, you can see the waterfall for the network transactions that occurred. And you also get deep links into other parts of Splunk Observability Cloud like APM. I go into more detail on this page in my previous video. Uh, in this video, I just wanted to focus on uh, how do you use the recorder and then how do you import a recorder export into Splunk Observability Cloud. Now, there are a couple of things to note about the Chrome recorder. It can be really useful for core user workflows that are high level and simple similar to the workflow that we performed in the online boutique. It's a critical workflow, but it was also pretty simple. It's not as ideal to use the recorder in situations where you have complex conditional workflows. For instance, maybe the page content dynamically updates once a user has selected a specific option on the page. In these cases, you might have to write more sophisticated custom logic. Additionally, when you export a recording and import it into Splunk Synthetic Monitoring, uh, you want to make sure that the steps and the interactions that are outlined in the exported uh, recording uh, can be mapped over to um, steps in Splunk Synthetic Monitoring. If I navigate over to the Splunk Docs page, uh, you can see under this section uh, how you can troubleshoot unsupported steps that are defined in Google Chrome Recorder but not available in Splunk Synthetic Browser Tests. And I'll link to this docs section in the uh, description. Now, although I'm not going to cover it in this video, uh, you can also create, in addition to uh, synthetic browser tests, you can also create uh, synthetic API tests in Splunk Synthetic Monitoring. And there's multiple reasons why you might want to uh, perform synthetic monitoring on an API endpoint, especially if your application depends on third-party services that uh, expose an API endpoint that you interface with, it's definitely worthwhile to uh, set up a synthetic monitoring test for that API endpoint uh, so that you can ensure that it's returning the data that you expect from that third party. And it doesn't just have to be a third party API endpoint. It could be also one of your own API endpoints that's consumed by uh, developers uh, who use your service, for instance. And in those tests, you can validate that data is being returned from the API endpoint that you would expect and that the API endpoint is available. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, we'd love to hear your feedback. Thanks for watching.